Why, whatever made you ask a question like that? Daddy was. He's always too busy. Your father's a very busy man. He promised to take us to the zoo, but he didn't keep his promise. Frederick, how many times must I tell you parents can't always do just exactly as they wish? If your father can't go, he has a very good reason for it. Well, he's always too busy. He never wants to take us any place or place or, or anything. Well, that's because he doesn't have time. Mr. Scott next door is trying to play at Bob and Shirley. Mr. Scott doesn't make as much money as your father does. That's the reason for that. Then I wish he didn't have so much money. Can't Gertrude take you to the zoo? We don't want to go with her. She's no fun. Then I expect you'll have to stay at home. Can't you take us? Marion, can't you watch what you're doing? Marie! Marie! Take the children out. I'll never get downtown. We oui, madame. Freddy! Haven't I told you not to slide down that banister? But dear to I... Please, don't argue. Go outside and don't get yourself dirty. In the sunny land of France, in ages past, there lived a lovely princess who was as good as she was beautiful, which is a way of saying that she was very good indeed. Nevertheless, she managed to annoy the evil sea spirits. In revenge, they drew her in her castle beneath the sea. There she had to live until some brave man could rescue her. And many seasons went by without anyone attempting this venture. Freddy! Marion! Marion! Freddy! Oh, good! Mrs. Scott, we need a dandy fairy tale. Can we stand here? At... I'm afraid not. It's time for you to practice your music, and Mr. Talley will be here in just a minute for your uh, ballet lesson. Now hurry up, I haven't all day to spend on lessons. American Railways is growing. It's 
stretching out every day. Nothing can stop it. I tell you, Tom, I won't be happy until it touches every city, town, and hamlet in the entire United States. Suppose it does. What then? What then? Why, then I'll have all the power I want and all the money I can use. Are money and power all you want out of life? Well, is there anything else? Certainly. Peace, happiness, and your family. Well, I find my happiness at work. You know, a man needs a lot of money to take care of a family. Granted, but he has no right to neglect them. Tom, you're a good lawyer and I need you. And you need me. But don't try to tell me how to live my life. Do you realize we've known each other ever since we started in school together? You weren't like this then. What's changed you? Well, I've grown older, that's all, and you haven't. I know what I want, and I'm going to get it. John, I've seen your children's faces. They aren't happy. But why not? How well do you know them? How much time have you given them? Oh, I suppose I know them as well as any father knows his children. After all, I'm a busy man. And That's just I... the point. Do you have to be too busy to give them a little of your time? And then there's Edith. Yes, there's Edith. Tom, she's become a perfect stranger to me. The only way I made conscious of the fact that I have a wife is through these, her bills. Hundreds of dollars spent on parties and balls and gowns and whatever else she can think of to spend money on. And I have to pay them. And you ask me why I don't devote my time to something else beside business. Listen, old man, have a talk with her. I know things can be arranged. Oh, no, it's too late. You can't reason with Edith. The only way I can teach her a lesson is to cut off her charge accounts and force her to live on a reduced allowance for a while. You're making a big mistake. Human beings can't be ignored or whipped into line. Oh, yes, they can, if you know how. I can't stand these expenses, and I don't intend to. Here's another of my monthly letters from her bankers, telling me she's overdrawn her account. Well, I've made arrangements that that won't happen again. Oh, Mrs. Worthington, the check you gave me last week came back marked insufficient funds. Oh, there must be some mistake. Please don't say anything about it, and I'll have my husband take care of it. Won't you lunch with me one day next week? Oh, why, I'd love to. Oh, 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 Freddy, now come down here. You know your mother doesn't allow animals in the house. Oh, please let us keep him. We found him. He belongs to us. I'm sorry, but your mother said... I don't care what she said. I'm going to keep him. Now give me the dog, please. Give me the dog. Now give me the dog. Give me the dog. Here, here. Come on, doggy, doggy, dog, dog, dog. Come on, come on, man. Here. Give me, give me no, the boy. Come here. Come on, come on. Bates. The, the, the dog, sir. Get him out of here. Yes, sir. Oh, Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Oh, can't we keep him? We found him. Oh, please let us keep him. Freddy says he's a police dog. Well, all right, but uh, keep him out of this room. Okay. I snared him, sir. So I see, and now you can give him a bath. I can, sir. Yes, and find a place for him to sleep in the basement. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Oh, Bates, <laughs> is Mrs. Worthington home? Uh, no, sir. That's all. You children run upstairs to Gertrude.
Yes, and I'd like to talk to you. What do you mean by cutting off my allowance? There's no excuse for it. The least you could have done was warn me. I did warn you. I told you exactly what was going to happen, but you wouldn't listen to me. I never was so humiliated in my life as I was at that bridge club this afternoon. One of my checks came back marked insufficient funds. And the expression on that woman's face when she spoke to me, it was insufferable. I'm sorry. You're sorry. You've been wanting this to happen. You've planned for it. And now you're laughing at me. In your mad, greedy striving for money, you've forgotten everything decent a man should be. Edith, you don't realize what you're saying. You've grown hard. You think only of dollars and cents and forget there are human beings around you. In your mad drive for power, power. Now you listen to me. Oh, listen to you. What do I mean to you? You loved me once, but now I'm only a person you like to see suffer. I hope someday this will come home to you, and it will. As sure as we're standing in this room, it will. <gasps> Tell you, Edith, I can't stand it a minute longer. I've got to have a bigger lump. Money, 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 that's all you think of. You think I can buy all my dresses for nothing? Nothing? Why, this week you spent five million dollars and twenty-nine cents. Do you think I'm made of money? Now keep quiet and go to sleep. I don't want to hear another word out of you two tonight. Can't we have a dog with us? Certainly not. Now go to sleep. Mm. Tom, I wanted to take you down to the club with me. Something I want to talk over with you. I'm sorry, John. It'll have to wait till the morning. Oh, why not come over here? I'll buy you a drink and give you an easy chair. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. Goodbye. I'm going over to the Scots for a while. After that, I'll be at the club. Very good, sir. Bobby, who's going to lead this parade? Well, here's a general. He ought to be out in front. Oh, he isn't any general. He hasn't got a sword. Well, all generals have to have swords. Then he's a captain. They don't have to have swords. Ah, he isn't a captain either. He's nothing but an old private. <laughs> it's hard to tell from the conversation, which is a kid. <laughs> well, my pants are longer. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it must be John now. Oh, I didn't know he was coming right over. Oh, hurry, dear, please. Long past your bedtime. Glad you came over, John. I don't want to go to bed. But you never do. Oh, we're trying to get these kids off to bed, John. <laughs> oh, good night. Come on, beat it now, youngster. Good night, John. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night. Good night, Anne. Come on, dear. Sit down, John. 
Thanks. Oh, man. You mean to tell me that they're not worth a whole lot more than just money and power? Perhaps. Tom, there's something I want to talk to you about. Now, just a minute. Don't be serious. No conversation until I buy you that drink I promised you. All right. She fell down the dumb waiter, Mr. Worthington. I don't know how it happened. You say the doctor's there? All right, I'm leaving at once. If there's anything we can do, John. Oh, call us, please. Yes, of course. Oh, how dreadful. Yes, I'll come home immediately. Put Freddy to bed in another room. Very good, sir. Remain in the nursery until I return. I don't, but I don't want to go to bed in another room. That's all right. I'll stay with you. Main, 4421. Yes. Miss Johnson. Tell Dr. Forbes and Dr. Jones to come over as quickly as possible and bring a special nurse with them. Yeah, right. How is she, Dr. Gray? Is it serious? Will she be all right? I can't tell yet. I'll know more after a consultation with the other doctors. However, we'll hope for the best. Well, is there anything I can do? Can I see her? Not at present. But I would like it as quiet as possible and let no one enter her room. How is she? Where is she? I'm going to... Wait a her. minute. You can't go to her now. Dr. Gray is with her and he's doing all that he can. They've sent for two other doctors. Oh, then she is in danger? How did it happen? Not being here, you wouldn't know. But I don't understand. Wasn't Gertrude with her? I don't know where Gertrude was. In any case, the fault lies more with you than it does with her. You've neglected your children. You should have been home, seeing that they were taken care of. My children? I suppose you're going to blame me for whatever has happened. Well, aren't you to blame? You say this to me, when you're really the one who is at fault for having neglected me? Nothing but business, business. Oh, I'm sick of it. What's the use? I shan't stand it any longer. Men and women go to the marriage altar these days, seemingly quite oblivious to the very object for which marriage is instituted, true companionship. Very frequently, they seek nothing but their own pleasure or gain. With little consideration for the children entrusted to their care, this particular case, based on incompatibility, seems especially direful to me, because children are concerned. A great man once said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. I wish now, even at this time, that both parties interested might entertain thoughts of reconciliation.
Under these circumstances, I have little choice except to grant the divorce. As to the custody of the children, although I am strongly opposed to the division of families, I am aware of the recommendations and pleas of the opposing counsel, and I therefore award the child Marion to the custody of her mother, and the son Frederick to the care of his father. Frederick. Be a good boy. Come on, Marion. that American railways stretch from one end of the United States to the other. And it's also true that it's one of the most powerful roads in the country. And it's powerful because of the millions that we have invested in it. And the thousands of men in our employ are well paid and are satisfied. And with conditions as they are, you have the audacity to come into my office and demand more money for them. Well, you have my answer. Well, you have my answer. We warned you, this is the last chance you have to give us what we want. Tomorrow the shop's closed. Get out. More money than fools. This means trouble. Well, suppose it does. But the strike may spread, and in that I'm still capable of handling my own affairs, and I intend to continue to do so. But, Mr. Worthing... When I want advice, I'll ask for it. That's all, gentlemen. Very well, sir. Well, what do you think, Tom? This will mean trouble. They were right. Then we'll meet it when it comes. But the men need that money. Their demands aren't unreasonable. If I give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Let them strike. I'll crush every last one of them that walks out. Strike is over. We've come to a satisfactory agreement. Come on, Fred. Get up. Get up, Fred. Yeah, I see you're in the papers again, too. Well, it was a swell fight while it lasted. But it was. Oh. Oh. Almost like I get a goodbye note from the dean any minute. Well, maybe you can come back next term. Come back to this dump. Not for a million bucks. There are plenty more colleges in the United States. Well, what's your old man going to say? Yeah. How did I know? Well, I might as well get it over with. Fortunately, he can't fight me. I've given you everything in the world you've wanted. I've clothed you and fed you and put you through school. And how do you repay me? 
by getting mixed up with a blues singer in a cheap cabaret. Well? I've spent a lifetime trying to build a reputation for myself and a name for my family, and you drag it in the mud. Is that all? No, it's not all. It's the second university from which you've been expelled. Well, it will be the last. From now on, you're on your own. I'm through. Finished. And now let me get a few things off my chest. You fed me. You put me through school, as you put it. But what else have you done? Have you ever felt that I needed friendship? Companionship? Have I ever felt free to come to you with a problem I didn't know how to work out? No. All you thought of was power and how to make more money. You learned how to crush poor human beings that didn't know how to defend themselves. You succeeded with them. But you're not going to with me. I'm glad I'm through. I'm glad it's all over. Now I won't have to go through the mockery of calling you father any longer. Think a few things over and you may get next to yourself. If you can stand it, So I kicked you out, huh? Right on my ear. Yeah, I'm awfully, awfully sorry. I sort of feel like it's all my fault. Sure. You started the fight, didn't you? Oh, oh. you know what I mean. I was responsible. <laughs> Forget it. Could play the piano. Lots of things about me you don't know. Are you serious about getting a job? Sure, if I don't want to starve. I know where you can get one. No, what's a gag? It isn't any gag. It's, it's Tony Gazzotti. He, he needs a piano player. If you catch me making love to you, and I promise always to be true, let me if you really want me to, cause it's the courteous thing to do. If you hear me ask you for a kiss, offer you a great big world of bliss, give your lips to me and don't resist, cause it's the courteous thing to do. You're gorgeous, you're glamorous, you're perfect, my dear, please make my life complete. You don't have to love me, just let me adore you. I lay my heart at your feet, and if I ask your hand in marriage too, and you really nothing else to do, meet me at the church and say I do, cause it's the courteous thing to do. Bravo, bravo. Then you'll get in the job. Sure. What do you think? When do I start? Come here tonight. We'll show them some nice things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's the matter with you? Oh, come on and cheer up. Don't you want to take the job? Oh, sure, that's all right. That's swell. Oh, and what's the matter with you? Well, nothing. Well, you don't want to tell me. I was just thinking of a, a little girl and that small woolly dog. A girl I haven't seen in 15 years. I wonder what she's like now. I'm sorry, Marion. I know I promised we'd take the house. However, you know how things come up to change one's plans. But, Mother, you just got back from Europe. Yes, I know. Oh, I'm sure you can spend your vacation with one of the girls, and I'll send you something from Havana. Thanks. Yes, I'll, I'll be able to manage. Of course you will. And I won't be gone long. Perhaps we could take the house later. Oh, Mother, stop promising me things. I'm not a child. Of course you're not. Well, I'll be at the plaza until morning. Perhaps we could do a show and have dinner. I'm sorry, but I... I have a date. Well, in that case, goodbye, dear. Goodbye. That's all you ever say to me. 
You keep me in school so I won't be a burden to you and so you can go out and have as good a time as you can. Marion, stop! What? I won't stop. I've wanted to say this to you for ages and I'm going to. You go ahead and have your good time. You don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. You're quite out of your senses. You can't mean what you say. Yes, I do. Now you can go on to the hotel, to a van. I don't care where you go. I never want to see you again and I won't. Goodbye. You worry at all. Come on, let's go. All right. Socrates, come in. Listen, you go in the next room and get rid of that gang. We'll be back in a few hours. And also, get our wrap. Meet us in the hallway and make it snappy. All right, meet us. Listen, shall we go now, darling? All right. Let's go. Now place the ring as a token of love on your bride's finger. Under the law, I now pronounce you man and wife. Well, we're here after all, darling. Is it nice to be home? <sighs> Roy, please. What's the matter? We're married, ain't we? Well, ain't that a pretty picture? What's the big idea? How do you get in here? What do you want? Take it easy, Daniels. We had our eye on you for some time. What are you frisking me for? Do you think I'd carry a rod when I was a lady? We ain't taking any chances with your kind. I don't know what you're talking about. You've no right to break in here. Forget it. You can do all your talking at headquarters. Headquarters? Yeah, does that sound strange to you? You mind if I call my lawyer? At headquarters. But he isn't going to get you out of this rap. Oh, yeah? Listen, darling. Don't worry. I'll be sprung in an hour. What's he done? 
done. Another thing, only he's been handling a lot of hot ice as soon as it was turned over to him. Hot ice? But I, I don't understand. You don't understand, eh? Maybe you can explain to the chief where that come from. Come on, sister. Where's the money for the rent? Well, I, I'm sorry, but I, I've tried everywhere to find a job, and I... Young woman, I've heard that story more times than I've got fingers and toes. But I... I can't go out now. I... If you don't have the money in the morning, how'd you get? But it's night. I, I can't go out now and look for a job. It's... I don't care how you get it. And I thought Simon Legree wore pants. Say, have you got a match, Toots? Maybe I could buy a match, huh? Why, well, yes, there's, there's one on the dresser. Oh, thanks. Have one? No, thanks. Say, I heard what that old battle axe had to say. Oh, oh, did you? Yeah, don't let it worry you, kid. You know, someday she's going to look at herself in a mirror and drop dead from the fright. <laughs> Things kind of tough, kid? Sort of. You feel like telling me about him? Well, there's, there's not really very much to say. Some guy? Oh, it dates back a long time ago. No man's worth feeling bad about, kid. What's his name? Do I know him? No, I, I don't think you would. Come on, tell me his name. You might as well spill it. It'll do you good. Well... His name is Roy Daniels. Who? What, what did you say? Daniels. Roy Daniels. Wait, you don't know him, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Well, we were married about ten minutes when the police came in and grabbed him. Oh, well, men are all alike, no matter where you find him. Got a drink around here? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, in that case, maybe you better come visit me for a while. Oh, but really, I, I can't. I, I have to, to... Now, listen, don't argue with your mama. I'm going to take you out. We'll have a couple of drinks. I'll throw some food into you. Come on. Let's no, go. but really, I can't go along. Oh, come on, come on. It'll do you good. I'll get some clothes on. We'll step out real. Come on. All right. else to do meet me at the church and say I do cause it's the courteous thing to do table for two who do you think we got with us a couple of goats right this way something to drink yeah two martinis come here are you happy Sure. You know, um, I sort of had a dream last night. What about? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I saw our names and lights and, oh, there were an awful lot of people standing in line to see us. Believe in dreams? Well, I... I'd sort of like to believe in this one. thing about this joint is you can pass out and nobody cares. Say, fill these up again, will you? A 
off the sidecar, Jake, and uh, make a snappy. Does the guy over there want to talk to you? Excuse me a minute, kid. Hello, Roy. Hi, Elsie. You look like you swallowed a nail, Shelby. Maybe I did. It's my stomach. You ought to know. Well, say, I met a friend of yours tonight. Yeah? Anyone I know? Lightly. Let's go over to the table. Martini. You haven't forgotten so soon, have you? You said something about meeting someone tonight who was a friend of mine. Yeah. Who? Your wife. Who? Hi, oh, you look like a fish. You heard what I said. You must be drunk. Who said I had a wife? A little bird. Funny you never told me you had a wife. <laughs> Why should I tell you? Well, I'm like a sailor. I've got a wife in every port. Yeah. Well, this one's caught up with you, see? What do you mean? You never told me you were married. And all the swell things you were going to give me. <laughs> Stringing me along all the time, telling me we were going to get married someday. Yeah, and all the swell places we were going to go. Cut it out. Do you want to get a stone out of here? I suppose you told her the same thing. And she fell for it, like I did. Well, it's true, ain't it? She's got the ring and everything. Is it on the level? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't need quiet down for a minute. To a happy reunion with your wife. Know her? Who? Girl at the table over there. I never saw her before. Why? Well, I don't know. Just wondering. Seems kind of low. And you keep your face out of this. Keep her quiet, Shelby. What'll I use, a chair? I don't care, use anything. Hello, wifey. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? Someday that guy's gonna walk into something he can't handle. And I got a hunch it ain't very far away. I've got a little score of my own. I'm going to settle with him. Yeah? Yeah. When we were sent up, he turned state's evidence. He got off easy. I had to take the rap. A rap. This is sort of a reunion, isn't it? Or should I say, an interrupted honeymoon? You've done enough for me. Will you leave me alone? Why should I? You're my wife, aren't you? Don't be a little fool. If you'd told the police in the first place who you were, they never would have held you. Too proud, eh? Stop, let go of me! No. Stop, you're hurting me! Are you... You're hurting me! Leave that girl alone! Go on, Sap, never interfere between a man and his wife. Now beat it! Oh, yeah? Yeah! <laughs> I'm sorry. You shouldn't have done it. Is there... Is there anything else I can do? A drink might help. Of course. Enrico, take a drink over to that girl. Yes. Who is she? I don't know. Just some girl.
I wouldn't do that. Things must be pretty tough to try a thing like that. Oh, I'll be all right. That's what you said before. I know. Don't get me wrong. I, I'd like to help you if I could. Worthington, Tony wants you at the piano. Oh, all right. What did he call you? Worthington. But just skip the name. I'm not exactly proud of it. You're... Your first name is... it isn't Fred, is it? Yes. Why, oh, say it. I'm Marion, your... your sister. Marion? Marion. You won't have to be afraid of things any longer. I know. Freddy Cat? I am not. <laughs> oh, Fred, let's get out of here. Let's go somewhere where we can talk. And that's all there is to tell. And you didn't tell the police who you were just because of that? Oh, oh, I couldn't after what I'd said to Mother. I understand. Fred, what happened to Jigsy? Why, I kept him about two years ago, and he died. Oh, he was so cute. He had a tough time of it, Marion. It's all over now. I'm going to change everything. A fine way to come in and find a wife. I'll change that, too. Please, Fred, don't. And I thought you were a swell girl. Why, you're nothing but a... You... Anything else you can do? John, I don't know. Everything is against us. There's no doubt that Marion was married to that man. Why didn't she come to me and tell me, Tom? Why didn't she? I don't care what the evidence is against them. Fred and Marion had nothing to do with the killing of Daniels. John, we know that. What I... 
should be here any minute. Well, I think I'd better run along, Tom. Oh, but John, you want to see Edith, don't you? I want to see her more than anyone else in the world, Tom. Edith. John. Isn't this terrible? Tom told me you were coming here, and so I waited. I'm glad. And to think this, this tragedy had to bring us together. Our whole life has been a tragedy, Edith, and... Well, this is just the result of it. I was a fool not to have seen what was coming. You the fool, John? I've been a fool. So hateful. So selfish. I've waited a long time for this moment. You don't know how long. I think I do. You haven't changed. You're just as lovely as ever. And you are the same, John. A little older. Wiser. Tom. Oh, Edith. You don't know how glad we are to see you. You cabled me you were doing everything you could, but the papers... Oh, they're just trying to dramatize things, that's all. You aren't telling me the truth. Tom has done all he can, dear. All we can do is to, to hope and pray. Try and think. Who came in the club with Daniel? It was just another man. I I think it was Steve Barnes. Well, we've checked on him. We know where he was every minute of that night. I know, but somebody threw that gun into the room. Yes. Did you see Marion come in the club? Was anyone with her? Yes, there was someone with her. It, it was another girl. Do you know who the girl was? No, I don't, but, but I've seen her several times. Was she a blonde? Well, yes. About five foot three, slightly round shoulders? Yes, yes, that's the girl. Have you ever seen this girl and Daniels and Tony's together before? I have, two or three times. How did she act when she went over to his table? Well, she seemed pretty sore about something, but... But I was busy, I couldn't hear what she was saying. By Jove, it's a chance. It's about the only chance we have. Miss Adams, will you sit in that chair, please? Oh, Max. This closet is just right for us. We'll wait in here. Right. idea. What are you doing in my room? I just dropped in to say hello. Hey, what's your racket? Oh, nothing. I was just curious to know why you killed Roy Daniels. What do you mean? You killed Daniels because you were in love with him. You were sore because he was married to Marion Worthington. <laughs> You're not. Oh, yeah. Well, your room's right across the hall. You got a gun from here and shot him. You were smart enough to toss it in the room after the shot, but you weren't smart enough to keep me from seeing you do it. Why, you liar, I didn't kill Daniel. Because Shelby did it. He went directly from this room into the other room and shot him. And then he threw the gun in there. I know, because I saw him do it. Thanks very much for the evidence, Elsie. Come on, we'll just hold you for a material witness. Now, all we have to do is round up Shelby. Well, it worked, didn't it? That is. Just down, right off the press. Shelby, confess it. Oh, he's going right. Confess it. Oh, he's going right. Extra paper, extra. Paper. Read about it. All right, sir, extra paper. Shelby, oh, confess it. Extra paper, extra. Paper. Read about it. All right, sir, extra paper. Shelby, oh, confess it. It's all about the big... I've no right to be as happy as this. I think we've both earned it, John. <laughs> Do you know what I'd like to do? 
I, I'd like to take a trip somewhere, just just you and I and and the kids, somewhere to the South Seas, or perhaps the Mediterranean. But your business job, you. Oh, I don't care about my business. I've learned the real meaning of the word happiness, and I'm never going to take a chance of losing it again. <laughs> Well, it's been a long time since I've done that. I guess I'm not so good any longer. Gail <laughs> should see you do it. Oh, she'll be here in a little while. I'll do it again for her. The bride and groom. Seems rather funny to ask one's parents how it feels to be married again. Well, Dad, if you feel as good as you look, you ought to be out jumping over fences. <laughs> well, that's just the way I do feel. So. <laughs> <laughs> Will you and Mother take us to the zoo? <laughs> <laughs>